Hey gang, alright, so we're going to do some nuclear decay and types notes. Um, these will be a bit longer than our last notes, but we'll get through this fairly easily. Uh, main goal here is for you guys to be able to identify types of nuclear decay um, and balance nuclear decay equations. So, uh, types of radiation, types of decay, and how to write it out and balance it. Um, so let's go and hop into this whole thing here. Um, so we'll start off with the nuclear decay part of all of this. Uh, nuclear decay essentially happens because something is unstable. So either it has really either has too few neutrons or too many. Um, neutrons sit in the nucleus of an atom, and they are kind of the glue that holds that nucleus together. Uh, if you don't have enough glue, then it the protons inside push away from each other and rip itself apart. Um, if you have too many neutrons, um, it just becomes too heavy and unstable, and it just can't deal with that. And so it tries, tries to shed some of the weight. Um, so either it's trying to lose weight rapidly or gain weight rapidly. Um, if we look down here, um, these are both examples of nuclear decay. An atomic bomb is uh, artificial decay. It, you're forcing something to uh, decay rapidly um, and you get a very violent explosion. Uh, the watch right here, if you notice, has all these fun little lights on it. Um, depending on the type of watch, some of them uh, use tritium, which is a gas, and they have tiny little vials. And tritium releases radiation, and the vial is painted with a type of phosphorus that will absorb it and glow. And so all this green glowing is phosphorus um, inside, absorbing the radiation and glowing. They also used to use uranium-based paints in the past, um, in the 60s, uh, and uh, so they would paint this uranium-based paint on the hands so that it would glow in the dark. Um, they generally stop doing that for a lot of reasons because it's essentially uranium that you don't want everywhere. Um, back then, too, they didn't know quite how dangerous it was, and so a lot of the people working in those factories would use paintbrushes to paint it on, and to keep the paintbrushes sharp, they would lick them. And this was generally a lot of women um, that did this job, and a lot of them got cancer later on in life because they were ingesting small amounts of uranium every time they went into work. Um, so less uranium-used watches now. They're actually a collector's item. Um, but moving on from there. Okay. So comparing chemical reactions versus nuclear reactions. So as I said, nuclear reactions happen because of instability. So um, it involves protons and neutrons, so it involves the nucleus, hence the word nuclear. Um, and the core of the atom is going to change in some way to form new elements. We're changing the number of protons that we had, the number of neutrons we had, and we are going to end up with brand new elements that we didn't have before. Um, large amounts of energy compared to chemical reactions and the waste can be extremely hazardous because the waste is pretty much radioactive um, uniformly. Uh, not very many natural reactions end up with non-radioactive waste. Um, chemical reactions, on the other hand, involve electrons in the atom, so it's not the core anymore, it's the outer levels of the atom. Um, they don't form new elements. If I start a chemical reaction with carbon, I end it with carbon. It's just maybe part of a compound that it wasn't a part of before or by itself when it was part of something, whatever. So you're just breaking bonds. You're not actually changing the elements that you start or end with. Um, and compared to a nuclear reaction, it is a small amount of energy. Now that being said, chemical reactions include things like high explosives and C4, TNT, all that fun stuff. That seems like a lot of energy, but then when you compare it to a nuclear reaction when the same mass of something would cause a nuclear explosion as opposed to blowing a door off or 
taking down a building, uh, you can see the energy differences. Okay. Um, so again, we're focusing all on nuclear here, so it's all that proton-neutron stuff. Uh, nuclear reactions um, happen in, well, one of three ways, really. Um, fission and fusions are the ones here. So you have normal decay, which we'll talk about through most of this, and that's honestly just shedding small pieces of mass over time. And then you can have forced nuclear reactions, which is what this fission, fission and fusion is. Um, fission is when a atom is very, very large, and something causes it to split. This is the whole, you know, splitting an atom thing that everyone always talks about. This is nuclear bombs, um, for the most part, and nuclear power plants. Uh, so generally, you have a very large atom. Something is either pushed into it or runs into it naturally, and it splits. Um, releases a large amount of energy and usually breaks up into a smaller um, set of atoms or smaller atom itself um, and produces usually radioactive waste. So nuclear power plants do this all the time. You start off with plutonium or uranium, hit it with uh, some neutrino particles and split them into smaller elements, most of which is radioactive waste material. Uh, fusion, so this is splitting, Fis fission is a fissure, um, fusion is combining. So you take smaller atoms like hydrogen or helium, ram them to e into each other at extremely high temperatures and pressure, um, and you get them to fuse into one new element and a larger element at that, um, and then it releases a bunch of extra energy. Uh, this is what the sun and stars do. Um, relatively no radioactive waste. I mean, it does produce radiation, um, but the product at the end is usually not radioactive. Um, so the sun is doing this right now with millions and millions and millions of uh, hydrogen atoms. It's using the together to make helium. When it's done with that, it will use all the helium to make um, lithium and so on from there. Um, so far less radioactive waste, a, a very large amount of energy, um, so if we could ever harness this, this would be a good end goal here, um, and it would be very energy productive, but that's farther down the line. Um, okay, so that's essentially just what radiation, what nuclear decay is in a sense. Types of radiation, uh, are the type of particles that can come out of radiation. So we'll talk about the types of particles that they can form and then the different ways that things can decay. So generally there are three different types of radioactive particles that we're going to focus on. Um, so you have alpha particles, beta, and then gamma, which is also x-rays. Um, so alpha particles are these big heavy fat guys um, they can be stopped with a piece of paper. They also don't go very far. They go maybe an inch in open air. Um, uh, and we'll talk about like what an alpha particle is in terms of like how dangerous they are and that kind of stuff moving forward. But essentially you just need to know alpha is the slowest and heaviest and gets stopped with paper. Beta. Uh, it's smaller than alpha, so it goes faster. Um, it can go through a piece of paper, no problem, but you can stop it with aluminum. Um, so aluminum foil will stop beta particles. Um, and then gamma, so gamma rays and x-rays are a type of light. So alpha and beta are both particles. They're both a physical thing. Um, these are both wa ra waves of light. Um, so they're not particles, they are literally moving the speed of light, so they are the fastest moving things that you can have. Um, and they're very, very small compared to these guys because they're not physical particles as we would consider these guys to be. Um, so gamma will definitely go through paper or go through aluminum. Uh, you need lead if you're going to accurately stop gamma and x-rays. The more lead, the better. 
Um, if you're talking about a nuclear bunker, those things usually have like feet of lead and concrete in order to stop all of the radiation. Um, if we're talking about you going into the dentist and getting an x-ray done, they put that fun little lead vest on you and it's not super thick, but it's not something you want to wear around 24-7 either. Um, so lead is what you need to stop these kind of rays coming through. Um, okay, so alpha particles represented by the symbol alpha, which looks something like this. It's kind of an A with an upper tail on it. Um, it has a charge of plus two. So they have a positive two charge. They are heavy and they are slow. Um, and you can stop them with a sheet of paper. Uh, what an alpha particle is, it is two protons and two neutrons. So it is essentially this guy right here. Um, another way to think about this is helium. Essentially this, an alpha particle, is the nucleus of a helium atom. So it's helium without any electrons on it. Two, prot two protons, two neutrons. Um, it gets ejected from the core of, the, of something larger, so essentially it's very rapid weight loss. You're losing a total mass of four. So this thing has a mass of four AMUs. Because two protons, two neutrons. Okay, so moving on from there. Beta particles. Um, a beta symbol in Greek is essentially the letter B with a little tail on it. Um, and a beta particle can either be positive or negative, so you can have beta plus and beta minus. Um, they are very small. They're essentially an electron. So they are, in terms of mass, basically the same thing as an electron. Uh, they move 100 times faster than alpha, and you can stop them with aluminum foil. So beta minus is an electron. So this is beta minus. They're the same thing. Beta plus is a positron, which is a positive electron. So it's a form of antimatter. It technically is not something you run into very often. Um, so that's what beta plus is. We'll talk more in depth about like what this means and everything, but just know that there's two different types of beta. So when we talk about beta, there's beta minus and beta plus, and this will come into play when we talk about decays in a minute here. Gamma particles. Uh, you can use this symbol, or you can also use this funky kind of Y symbol. Um, they are a form of light, so they don't have a charge. And because they're electromagnetic waves, they are light. So they are moving at the speed of light. Um, which I think is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which is really fast. Uh, if you want to stop them for, sh for sure, you need very thick lead. Um, the thicker, the, the more dense the material, um, the better, and the more of that material that you have, the more likely you are to stop it. Um, this isn't all the types of radiation, but it's the three big ones that we'll fo focus on um, for this class. So, three different types of radiation, alpha, beta, gamma. Uh, particle, particle, wave. And I know it says gamma particles there, but it's probably better to talk about it as a wave. Okay. Uh, types of decay. So this is going to be the hmm, probably more confusing part of all of this. And this is the thing that we'll focus on the most, being able to write out decays. So since we have alpha particles, that means we can also have alpha decay. So if you guys remember from our isotope notes, these are isotope notations. So you have radium-226 rad, um, and radon-222. Um, these are their atomic numbers, respectively, and then helium. 
um, which is our alpha particle. So I told you that you can think of an alpha particle as a helium without electrons. That's one right way to write it. So what happens? Well, we're losing a helium nucleus, so we're losing two protons and two neutrons. So we are going, the atomic number is going down from two, so it's going from 88 to 86, because we lost these two protons. And the mass is going down by four, we're going from 226 to 222 because we lost this mass. We lost two protons and two neutrons. So alpha decay. Atomic number goes down by two. Atomic mass goes down by four. If you notice, this is essentially a math equation. 88 equals 86 plus two. The left side has to equal the right side. Well, we started with a mass of 88. We still have a total mass of 88, it's just not together as one thing anymore. Two, there are 86 of the protons are still in the nucleus, two of them are flying out into space. Um, and then same thing with the mass changing. Well, we started with a mass of 226. We still have a total mass of 226, it's just that four of that those mass points, essentially the two protons and two neutrons, those four mass points aren't in the nucleus anymore. So that's all alpha decay is. Atomic number goes down by two, mass goes down by four. So here's what we have. Thorium, which has an atomic number of 90, is, and a mass of 230, is decaying by alpha decay. Losing a mass of four, losing an atomic number of two, and becoming radium. Um, and here you're seeing the alpha symbol. You can also write HE for helium, um, like it is back here. They're interchangeable. I usually use the Greek letters myself, but it doesn't really change a whole lot. Um, so I want you guys to try number two and three here. So two is written out for you. You just have to figure out what this uh, new element is going to be. And this right here is called the daughter because it's you have the parent isotope and the daughter isotope. Um, don't ask me why they decided to go you know, one way or another. Um, not call it the child, whatever. It's just the normal, it's just whatever one refers it to. So figure out what the daughter product is here and then write out the equation and figure out the daughter here. Um, so pause it, take a moment and try it. I'm going to pause recording and you'll just see it all suddenly appear in about three, two, one. Okay, so you should have just seen it all magically appear here. Um, so walking through everything, uranium-238 is going to decay by alpha emission to produce thorium-234. Um, and then down here we have polonium-210 it is going to decay, so this arrow is saying, here's what we're starting with, it decays, we produce this alpha emission and this daughter product, which is lead-206. Um, so polonium-210 decays through alpha emission to produce lead-206. Uh, I'm just going to get on a quick little soapbox here. Um, this right here is a, a pretty fast nuclear decay, actually. Um, so it happens pretty readily, and um, polonium-210 can be found in cigarettes, actually it can be found in tobacco of any kind, including chew, tobacco, and everything else, as well as marijuana and vape fluids, um, because those things are extracted from the plants. Um, and so, yeah, uh, polonium-210, which has a fairly quick half-life, it decays fairly rapidly, um, becomes lead, and it releases this fun little alpha particle, which, if you breathe it in on a regular basis, causes you to get lung cancer sometimes, um, or throat and mouth cancer in the case of chewed tobacco. So yeah, if you ever are curious, leading reason for cigarettes and tobacco in general to cause cancer, it's this right here because of this nuclear decay. So don't smoke, and I don't care what it is or how many people tell you X, Y, or Z is safe, 
they don't know what they're talking about because of this. You can't get rid of this. Um, so yeah, don't smoke. Um, okay, so that was polonium, or that was uh, alpha decay. Um, so we can have beta decay, uh, and um, depends on the type of beta. So earlier when we were talking about betas, I said there's beta plus and beta minus. Um, so when we say beta decay, we are talking about beta minus. Um, so this is going to be beta minus decay. Uh, what's going to happen here? Um, so in the alpha decay, you have uh, these four particles that are just being ripped off and flying away. It's like taking a small chunk of yourself and throwing it far off into space. Um, this is a little bit different. So what's happening here is the instability that's uh, in the nucleus is going to cause one of the neutrons to turn into a proton. So we have a neutron becoming a proton inside of the nucleus. Well, we suddenly now have a new proton that wasn't in the nucleus, which means the atomic number just went up by one. And the mass will not change because mass is protons and neutrons. Well, we just substituted a neutron for a proton, um, or I should say proton for a neutron. So we still have the same mass inside, it's just the atomic number changed. So here you can see carbon-14 has atomic number of 6, it goes through beta decay. Its atomic number goes up by 1 because one of its neutrons turned into a proton. And when this happens, um, you also produce this small little beta particle that flies off into space. Um, so the neutron becomes a proton and it releases this fun little tiny beta particle. Um, so that's essentially beta decay in a nutshell. So looking at those same decay equations, well, here we have thorium-230 again. Um, I kind of used it as a lot of the starting examples. Uh, it's going through beta emission, um, so beta minus. You can either use the E for electron, because that's what a beta is, or again, you can use the Greek letters. Um, I usually stick with the Greek letters myself. So thorium-230 emits this beta particle and becomes, uh, what is it, uh, protactinium. Um, so this is the general decay cycle for everything here. So thorium-230 becomes protectin-230. Again, the mass doesn't change. Um, alpha is the only one that will ever change the mass. So the rest of these, you don't have to worry about the mass changing at all. Uh, so because of that, we already know this mass is going to change, so this mass is going to stay 238. Uh, we can figure out the rest of this, um, so I'm going to pause again, or you should pause as well, um, try to solve out the rest of 2 and 3 here, and then uh, in about 3 seconds or so, you'll just suddenly see it appear on the screen here, so 1, 2, 3, and like magic, there it is. So, um, Again, the mass here is not changing, so we're going from 92 to 93 and becoming neptunium. Uh, down here, we have actinium, so 227, um, releasing this beta emission and becoming thorium, which is 227 as well. Really important with these things. Numbers on top need to add up. Numbers on bottom need to add up. So if we have 227 here, well, 0 plus 227 is 227. And then 89, well, that equals negative 1 plus 90. So, and yeah, that's a 9. I apologize for the scribble work here. Um, so it's very important that the numbers on top add up, the numbers on bottom add up. Uh, positron decay. So I told you that there's two betas. Well, this is beta plus. Guess what? If this is beta plus, the other one's beta minus, here's the only difference. So beta minus, a neutron becomes a proton. Well, beta plus, it goes the other way. A proton becomes a neutron. And we get this fun little beta plus emission that happens only major difference here is atomic number goes down by one. 
So no mass has changed at all. So let's look at this. Here's carbon 14. It goes through positron decay. So it releases this positron and it becomes boron. So go and try these two out and you guys know the drill by now. Plot, pause it, try them, and you'll suddenly see magic happen right about now-ish. And like I said, magic. All right, so looking at uranium here, uranium-238 goes through positron decay, produces uh, protactinium-238. Sodium-22 goes through posit positron decay, becomes neon-22. Fairly straightforward. Atomic number went down by one because it's plus one here instead of minus one. And again, I prefer the Greek letters personally, but hey, whatever you prefer. So the betas can be written with E for electron, alpha can be written with HE for helium. Very last type of decay to look at, K capture. This is the one that usually confuses everyone, so pay attention. So K capture or electron capture. This is essentially something forcing an atom to decay. Um, so something is entering the nucleus and forcing the decay. So instead of an atom just decaying on its own, something entered and forced it. Um, so we have this electron here, which is this negative one, um, and it is captured. So there's no emission for this exactly. Um, and not in the equation anyways. Uh, so we have a proton being forced to become a neutron, so you have this proton here. Um, this tiny little electron comes into the proton, so this is our E minus one, and it forces this thing to become a neutron. When this happens, this thing will also produce a little bit of gamma. So there is an, a gamma emission that happens here, but we don't write it into the equation, so this is just kind of for your benefit to know. It's not part of anything that we write out. But proton is becoming a neutron, so atomic number goes down by one. The end result of K capture is the same as positron. They will end up making the same thing, just a different way of doing it. So K capture or electron capture is the only decay where you're going to have two things on the left and only one thing on the right. So we have carbon 14, it is capturing this electron, it's probably one of its own electrons, and shoving it into the nucleus in order to turn a proton into a neutron, atomic number goes down, mass stays the same, you guys know the drill, so go and try these two equations and see what you can do. So pause it about now. Central uh, magic. Okay. Um, so arsenic 73 absorbs an electron, becomes germanium. Mercury 201 absorbs an electron, and hey, look, it becomes gold 201. You can technically make gold. This process would probably be more expensive than the gold would be worth, but it's possible. Um, the big thing here is, if you notice, I told you guys I like the Greek letters. Well, because this is an electron, there's no Greek letter here. Uh, mercury is absorbing an electron. So E is the only accepted symbol that can go here. K capture is capturing an electron. So this has to be written this way. Um, again, also, there's only this is the only one where there's two things on the left and one thing on the right. So, quick breakdown of everything alpha, two protons, two neutrons, mass goes down by four, atomic number goes down by two. This is the only one that is going to have a change in mass. So, Alpha is the only one that changes mass. Beta. Uh, it releases a beta particle. The only thing that happens is atomic number goes up. This is the only one that causes the atomic number to increase because a neutron is becoming a proton. So alpha is the only one that changes mass. Beta is the only one that increases the atomic number. 
positron decay is going down by one, um, and a proton is becoming a neutron. This is a form of antimatter, so that makes it a little bit unique. And then K capture is capturing an electron. Two things on the left, one thing on the right. Um, as a proton becomes a neutron. So difference is only one to change mass, only one to increase the number, only one to produce antimatter, only one to have two things on the left because of the captured electron. That's it. I'm sorry these notes took so long. I'm right at the half hour mark there. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. We'll go through this. If you guys get confused at all, please let us know, and we will uh, try to make this make a bit more sense. Um, and have a good rest of your day.